Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, Let's Build, where we're finishing off our giant plasma canoe. And I'd like to start off for apologizing for a little being a little bit thin on the ground with the content creation lately. A bunch of stuff has happened. Well, firstly there's the whole applying for jobs thing. That takes up time. Uh, but also, um, like I had surgery on my foot, but and last but not least, I caught frickin' COVID. So, for those of you who have not, who have been lucky enough not to catch the Rona, trust me, you don't want it. I've had uh, the vaccination and two booster shots, and it still floored me for like five days. So, yeah, yeah you, you don't want this, folks. Stay safe out there. It, the pandemic's not over. But aside from that, uh, I'm recovering uh, in every way possible, so that's nice. And uh, we get to talk more about uh, this plasma canoe. So... The end result with this, uh, not to get ahead of myself, I'm kind of happy with some things and not happy uh, with other things. I'm happy with the actual plasma gun on this, uh, but there's a bunch of things I'm less thrilled about. So uh, I think the problem with this particular design is something that I've done before in that I've tried to do too many new things at once. And if you're trying to, if you're trying something out, which in this case is a large uh, craft, which is armed with a weapon system you don't have much experience with, uh, really you gotta do things, you know, you gotta, like, you know, as much as possible stick with whatever baseline you have, so, and I've kind of done that with the, so this being in a canoe, but at the same time, not really, I really do prefer that, you can see the little camera twitch as I'm literally nodding the mouse at it, I do that sometimes, um, yeah, what you saw there before was me tweaking uh, some things uh, on the Seawiz controller because I realized uh, actually some time after I recorded uh, the last part of this is that the reason why uh, those um, short-range interceptors were not eating uh, entire volleys of cram properly is because uh, the gauge limit on the Seawiz controller was too strict and so basically if a cram shell was uh, less than 1,500 millimeters, the interceptors were ignoring it, and that meant a whole swarm of crams were still getting through. By the way, um, minimum gauge crams can still really frickin' hurt, so don't be like me, learn from my mistakes. And yeah. Uh, so now we're working on lambs, and the lambs is decent rather than good. This kind of hull design, by the way, and um, surprisingly for um, anyone who, like me, um, is terrified of the white flares because they're scary. This kind of, um, I don't know, what, what would you call this? Like, this kind of, uh, thing where you have a big turret right in the middle of the craft, that's not actually very good, uh, ship design, I tend to find, because it just makes it so that the turret is far more likely to get hit, uh, than any other part of it. So, generally, and this is quite general, uh, when you're building a crafter from the depths, uh, especially, in particular, a surface broadsider, which means that it trundles along on the surface of the water or on land, um, uh, the highest part of the craft and the most central part of the craft is probably going to get hit the most. So don't put your important stuff there. That's actually one of the reasons why superstructure, and yes, I know, shocking, it's me saying this, uh, my superstructure is usually not very super at all, uh, that's why superstructure is a good idea, because it doesn't matter if it gets blown off, usually. So, you kind of want to put your most important stuff, uh, and that goes for everything, actually. Main weapons, AI, ammo. You want to put that off-center, and whatever is in the middle, it should be something you're fine with getting blown up. Because even though the From the Depths AI doesn't aim for center of mass, that is the part of your craft which, um, just due to how the game works, uh, like, you know, how the AI like, predicts target movement, that's the stuff that's least likely to get missed, if that makes sense, uh, as your craft is moving and wiggling around. So, yeah. Uh, that is a kind of a failure of this craft, because it's got this big, expensive, somewhat fragile turret uh, right in the middle. That's another thing I regret about this. These flat turrets, they look cool, and that's the only good thing about them. Uh, one thing in particular that, um, they really do not do well, especially when compared to the kind of circular pancake, um, I guess, um, 
an ironclad style turrets that I uh, usually do, uh, they don't protect their detection at all, because the thing with a, a honking big uh, necklace turret is that you can kind of squirrel away cameras deep inside the turret well, which means that they're very hard to blind. In the combat testing I've done uh, with this thing, and you'll see this later in the video, this freaking canoe uh, gets blinded quite easily because all the detection is like, it's accessible from the surface. Well, at least it's somewhat EMP resistant because I just went ham on that. Um, another thing I regret is the armor. So, the armor scheme on this thing with like, the amount of like, air gaps in it, so it's like two layers of armor and a space, two layers of armor and a space, that was me thinking like, okay, we, let's try and make this plasma proof and as much as possible. Like, you know, that makes sense, right? Uh, make it uh, plasma proof. Oh, like, by the way, forgive. Lambs are always one of those things that I like is a bit of an afterthought for me. So I generally don't do the best job possible. Uh, please forgive me. They're like, really, uh, you should plan out a lambs ahead of time. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, damn it. I knew I was going to lose my train of thought. Um, damn it. Well, it'll get back to me eventually. Hopefully. And now I'm stuck thinking about what the hell I was doing. Oh, the armor scheme. So, in practice, uh, block spam is as good a defense against plasma as any, simply because the amount of spammed blocks it takes uh, to protect against plasma is usually still cheaper than the plasma weapon that is shooting at you. So... Uh, people have actually tested Plasma against some of my uh, designs, and um, they've been reporting in the comment section, so thank you for that. Apparently the Drakenslung, uh, my big, beautiful, um, giant hydrofoil, which I'm quite impressed by. Like, I'm taking her for a spin in the Caravonian Rebellion playthrough that I'm, uh, that I'm doing, and she's just such fun. She's not efficient at all uh, for that campaign, because she's just too big, she's not cost-effective at all. Uh, but yeah. Oh, by the way, this canoe can uh, take on a stronghold and be basically unscathed, which is very, very nice. You can see it's taken out all those big torpedoes there. So it's not like the like individually the systems on this canoe are great, um, but it's just their arrangement is a bit well, it's a bit crap. So as with any uh, as with any craft, it's a learning experience. So if I was to do this again. I would do it differently. For one thing, honking big superstructure, and um, yeah, multiple turrets, multiple redundant turrets, and uh, this thing actually ended up being cheaper than I expected. It's just over 700,000 materials, which is quite impressive. I think it's because it actually skimps on armor a little bit, which is not smart, uh, not for something like this anyway. But yeah, <coughs> yeah, so not fully recovered from the Rona, by the way. Uh, so, hopefully my voice doesn't give out before this recording is over, because that would be really terrible. I'm gonna have to, <coughs> I'm gonna have to start uh, speaking from the diaphragm a bit more. So this is me speaking from the throat. This is me speaking from the diaphragm. So let's try this, and automatically I sound deeper and hopefully more cool. Do I sound like your dad? Please don't answer that question. So yes, now we're going to do the smoke. The smoke. Um, this craft, um, the initial combat test against the laser arm thing, uh, is not going to be like this. But um, it ends up being quite laser resistant, which is nice. That's not what its job was. Technically, this craft failed at what I uh, at the one objective I set for it. It's supposed to be able to take on uh, the pyre one on one and win because I don't know why the pyre exactly. Um, it's the pyre is just kind of the uh, thing I think of when I think of something that just needs to be countered via plasma. Uh, except the uh, the pyre is twice as expensive uh, as this uh, little pl little eh, as this plasma canoe, and um, there's other things about the pyre that just hard counters this. For one thing, this thing doesn't have enough armor, and its turrets are squishy. So its turrets are brittle, actually. So. That's, that's not great. I should speak from the diaphragm more often. It feels very, very nice. Like, my throat feels better already. Curses, I've run out of coffee. Nurse, there's something wrong with my 
coffee cup, it's empty. Uh, so this is also me trying to be clever uh, with uh, the smoke, is trying to put it on surge protectors whenever possible, uh, so that massive EMP jolts just kind of worm their way into the surge protector and then are just kind of, you know, ended early before they do serious damage. Um, let me know, uh, helpful people in the comments, if that's actually a good idea, whether I've misunderstood EMP yet again. And there's the, oh, I like, it's very fortuitous placement of that laser warner right there. Uh, great things happen, uh, with that later. I guess laser warners, me being paranoid and putting them absolutely everywhere. And, yeah, man, like, those interceptors, those interceptor... Superstructure on turrets, I know everyone told me to do that, and I also quite like the idea. It's not a good idea, as it turns out. Because a turret is something you don't want blown up, and superstructure is something that you shouldn't mind if it gets blown up. It's just stuff above deck that doesn't truly matter that much. <coughs> oh no, I need to speak lower than the diaphragm. I need to speak from the feet. I need to speak from my toes which have been gouged for medical reasons. If you've ever had a plantar wart removed, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, um, it is a very interesting experience. Oh hey, look, smoke. My goodness, like, these let's builds are kind of just turning into me reporting on my life, which you may or may not be interested in. Just to remind you that yes, I am a human being and I have medical issues. Uh, support me on Patreon so I can pay for my medical issues. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine for the most part. Okay, so there we've got some idle elevation and lambs are all good. And this thing is basically done by the looks of it. And I believe well, it's not. I haven't added shields, right? So. Uh, what are you doing? This is me trying to figure out something that's roughly the same cost. And this is the point where, well, you can immediately see there how the uh, little interceptors on top um, just get shredded immediately by the lasers on the candela. And I hate the candela. Like, whenever I start liking lasers too much, I'm just reminded that, like, things like this exist, and it's like, this is not fun. Like, uh, the lightning hurts. Like, people hate fighting the lightning hoods because I think more than any other affection from the depths they're just really annoying to fight they're not fun they're just really fast and they have lasers so you can't dodge them you can't evade them and the most straightforward uh, way to deal with them is to cheese them with submarines which is well kind of tedious for the most part really but, I mean, it's like, ugh, like, how else would you... There's no way you're going to redesign them now. And the fact that they're uh, scheduled to get plasma weapons is probably only going to make them worse. But, yeah. The lightning hoods are, are a giant pain in the patootie. I should occasionally... I should do a poll just for fun to see... Oh, no, you can't, because YouTube polls suck and they only allow five options. <coughs> I have to do more than one. But, yeah, so, um... Yeah, the candela is a good uh, is a good yardstick for uh, testing not only laser defense but also like on spawn laser defense. Like the little ACB setup I set up there, set up, set up, set up, set up. How many times can I say that before it sounds weird? Uh, yeah, and this is the point where I realized, hang on a minute, like what the hell's happening here? Like why are we missing so much? It's because the graph's been blinded. All the de all the detection has been shot off like immediately, and. Uh, it's a really, it's actually a pretty good example of like, um, or a showcase rather, just how much I've gotten used to just hiding uh, cameras inside turret caps, uh, which is, a, as it turns out, a really pragmatic thing to do, because um, the craft which I use in which they do that, they pretty much never get blinded completely, uh, which is uh, amazing if you think about it, because like, I don't remember the username, but the person who told me uh, that, um, uh, what's it, like, uh, decoration deck ports, um, like, can be used to essentially armor up, uh, visual cameras. Mwah! You are a wonderful human being, and I wish you the very best, and I hope that if you get plantar warts removed, <laughs> you have a very speedy recovery. 
That was weird, I apologize. So, yeah. What have we talked about here? So, the shields, I think the shields are set up okay uh, for this. Like, um, this is one of the great things about, like, going ham on uh, the power, because here's the thing. There's no such thing as too much power uh, when you're designing craft from the depths, because at the end of the day, uh, when you put shields on the thing, shield projectors specifically, no one likes ring shields. Ring shields are terrible. I think even the devs don't like ring shields these days. Um, yeah, so like you can always just use it to put some really strong shields on the things in like critical areas, and you know, then you're using you're using uh, power in a way that's useful. So yeah, that's quite good, I guess. I'm not sure where I was going with that, but yeah, ring shields like. Share in the comments below what you think ring sh what should be changed with ring shields because um, they suck. They just they're just not great. I remember when they were first announced. I was um, well first uh, added to the game. I was quite excited about them because like I just hate. Um, I thought I hated shield projectors, but then little did I know that um, life could get much worse uh, in the shield department. Um, yeah, because ring shields, they're, they don't do enough. Uh, that tiny little armor boost does nothing against things like uh, particle cannons or armor piercing shells. And now, plasma. Like, plasma pretty much renders ring shields completely and utterly useless because uh, getting the AP of... Oh, this is fun. The rectifier uh, actually does not last long against this plasma canoe, which is a good sign. Uh, but yeah, so... Ah, uh, yeah, that's a problem right there. Like, th that's a kind of a problem with the plasma. Is that it's difficult to hide the firing uh, pieces. The... I forget what the term is it. The mantlet firing piece. Same thing for plasma. Um, yeah, I did, yay. It's difficult to hide it, in, like, deep inside the turret cap. It's a bit of a bummer. But, yeah, what was the thing? Oh, yeah, so plasma renders ring shields pretty much completely and utterly useless now. Uh, simply by their existence, because... Uh, what you've got is, like, it's so difficult to get, like, AP, like, anywhere close to, no, AC, sorry, um, anywhere close to, like, over a hundred anyway. So, plasma just means that, like, oh, you spent so much money and energy on ring shields. Well, sucks for you, like, I have a plasma gun that does not care about your feelings uh, in regards to armor at all. This is me adding a heat decoy uh, down here, which honestly, I'm not sure if this was worth it. It's like, it's a good thought, I think, but also, like, uh, possibly could have done without it. It's like I said, this, um, uh, this uh, craft is kind of full of good ideas, but just not implemented particularly well. And that is just begging to get shot off right there, so... Do do do, do 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 That's what's happening right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Am I going to edit out all this coughing? Probably not, because because I'm lazy. I'm recovering from being sick and wounded. I have an excuse this time. In a few weeks, I won't have that excuse. Will I start editing my coughs out of episodes? Probably not, because I'm lazy, like I just said. Okay, so at this point, we're we're I'm feeling quite happy with uh, with the craft so far. I'm just thinking like, what else are we gonna do? And I think, what do we do? I think this is heat decoy ACB right here. There we go. Yeah, there we go. There we go. If nothing else, this craft um, was intended to be like an experiment. Like, okay, can I? Uh, wh how does a uh, craft feel when like plasma is the main weapon and What it ended up being was proven that yeah short-range interceptors can actually work very well provided um, You don't set them up the way I did here because if you stick them up like all uh, Bare arse hanging out like on top of the most uh, obvious place to shoot at uh, Then they don't do their job very well because they get well shot at and that's a problem um, so this is the point where I realized, like, wow, this thing's kind of laser resistant now because it's got uh, pretty strong shields. I don't recall whether I've actually set them to be as strong as they end up being at this point. Um, 
but yeah, that combination of smoke and shields uh, means that uh, pretty laser resistant, which I guess is uh, the uh, the response to uh, the whole thing of like, oh, the lightning hoods are one of the most annoying factions to fight. Lasers are still kind of straightforward to counter. You smoke and shields. Um, yeah, so I guess there is that to be said. But it's still annoying to uh, have to deal with like something that just, you know, ah, ha, 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 I'm going to damage you and there's nothing you can do. Because this thing still damages you, in particular with um, uh, laser craft, I think like uh, the, uh, what the hell, I wanted to call it the Cyberdyne, that's definitely what it's called. That does sound like a Lightning Hoods uh, craft name though. Uh, not Cyberdyne, uh, damn it. Literally looked at the spawn menu right now. Wow. Please bring it up again, okay. Yay, there's a little mod. The, um, ah, damn it. I've completely forgotten what this thing's called. I, d I don't remember. I'm gonna call it Jeff. So, particularly when you're going up against things like Jeff, um, it's just, it's kind of, it's not fun to deal with something that's just really fast and, like, it'll shoot you dead before you can even realize really what's happening. Uh, it's a bummer. I'm looking at these turret caps and thinking, man, it's a shame they don't work very well because they do look really nice. I love how, like, flat and sci-fi they look, but they don't even fully cover the mantlet, so unfortunately, they're not very good. Not very good at all. And of course, like, this actually is uh, me falling into, I guess, something of a noob trap, uh, which um, I feel a few people fall into when they first start playing From the Depths. I feel I've regressed somewhat in From the Depths ability recently. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I keep trying to force myself to do things differently. Um, which is not great for, like, your confidence. Uh, or, like, your building method or just stuff like that. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so it's like, uh, it's falling into the trap of, like, looking at the stats of, like, mantlets and stuff and thinking, you know what, That's, that has a lot of health and a lot of armor. It should be fine if I don't cover it. Uh oh. Sneeze, damn you. Damn it, I hate it when that happens. Although it's great I didn't sneeze into the microphone, I guess. Ah, yes, camo. But anyway, so always cover your mantlets. Learn from my silly mistakes. I should have gone with this camo. I should have gone with this. I should have just gone with like a mixture of the Arctic and Night camo because that would have looked really cool. Fast border wise, why didn't you do that? Look, knows either you're gonna sneeze or you're not gonna sneeze. Pick one. Don't leave me. Hang on a minute. I am trained professional. I completely stopped looking at the screen. Uh. Oh hey, full night camo. What do you think this is, Borderwise? You think this is a stealth canoe? I don't think so. The freaking interceptor mohawk on top of that turret means that everybody sees this coming and then immediately shoots off the mohawk. Hmm. That is the thing uh, with, um... Uh, craft like this like uh, anything that's really sticking up out of the thing uh, You got to remember that anything that hits that um, Anything that misses the main hull and hits the high thing whatever that is be it a superstructure be it a mast uh, Be it a not very well thought out turret um, Just mentioning that for no reason in particular past border wise now you got to remember that if the tall thing wasn't there that would have been a miss so that's generally why I build my craft, like, very low slung. It's like, it's like tank design, pretty much. Or I guess like Russian tank design, at the very least. They build their tanks real flat. Because they don't care about crew comfort at all. It is interesting, like, I'm not a huge military nerd, but it is fun learning about the different approaches that, um... Uh, military tech designing nations. There's pro gotta be a better way of saying that. Um, it is interesting to see how different nations approach, like, tank design and stuff like that. Because it's all kind of different. Like, the Americans just go for, like, a big fat thing that just has overwhelming power and just eats its own body weight and fuel per day. 
that's an exaggeration, don't at me. And, uh, you know, the German, like the Germans with the Leopard and Leopard 2 and the new, what's it, like the new thing, the Panther, I believe it's called. Um, yeah, they're kind of going for, like, I think firepower above um, in everything else. And then, uh, what, what is it, like, uh, the, uh, the British, the United Kingdom with the Challenger, they're kind of like, they still think of using tanks as infantry support, which is interesting because um, that was their whole shtick back in World War II as well. And it kind of worked and also kind of didn't from what I understand. Oh goodness, I'm opening up the comments for the whole, were British tanks bad uh, kind of thing. I have no opinions because it's like, the Second World War was a long time ago and like, yeah, like, you know, you can talk about stuff, World War II stuff, until the cows come home, for the most part. And who had the best tank is probably not the most important thing to consider. Hey, look, a canoe cockpit. That makes perfect sense. But yeah, so my favorite World War II tank is the Churchill, just because I like how it looks. It's very long. It's the canoe of tanks. And that's a surprise to no one. <coughs> <coughs> I possibly shouldn't be recording just yet. I might have jumped the gun a little bit. I'm gonna need to, I don't know, drink a soothing cup of tea after this. Oh boy. Seriously. Don't do what I do. Don't go... Actually, no. I caught, I caught the Rona from my flatmate who foolishly went on public transport. You damn fool! And this is where... We're, this is like... This is the fun part. I love, um doing deco kind of stuff and can I just say shout out to the from the depths developers thank you so much for making like uh, you know prettifying your craft making it so easy I know I'm not the, the best example of an aesthetic builder like almost certainly not whatsoever but the fact that we have mimics and decorations and camo and like block the armor refit is actually really good for like mass painting so you can just say like right I want all the metal blocks on this craft to be replaced uh, with um, with metal but in a different color in a sexier color and then we and then you can just click a button and it happens and it's just that's so convenient it's like wonderful so just golf clap for the devs for implementing such lovely features like that you gotta love it. You gotta love it a lot. Incidentally, this might be, like... Here's the thing. This uh, canoe is almost certainly not the... Nowhere near as good as it could be. But at the same time, this is probably one of the... <laughs> my favorite faces I've ever put on a craft at all. Because it just looks like... It, it just looks very angry. <laughs> I'm looking at this and laughing right now. <laughs> oh, you goof. You goofy goober. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh dear, sorry I sniffed. I am told that I have... I've probably told this story already. I once uh, was sitting an exam. I don't remember what the exam was. Um, but yeah, I was... I had a cold, and so I was constantly sniffing. And apparently, like, um, the guy next to me kept, like, dropping hints that I wasn't picking up, so that I should stop sniffing. Until he eventually slid a note over to me and said, like, you sniff one more time and I'll break your nose. And... As if by magic, I no longer felt the urge to sniff, so that was an interesting, that was a very interesting experience, um, because, um, it was almost like seeing that note triggered, like, the unthinking parts of my body to be like, okay, no, don't sniff. It triggered, I guess it's like, you know, you, you know there's danger, and so, like, you know, certain things that could give you away in your hiding place just stop because you can imagine back in the back in the day tens of thousands of years ago when we were all hanging out on the african savannah having a good time uh if you were like uh like hiding in a tree because a pride of lions was walking past or something uh the imminent danger would probably mean like you would be like even the more unconscious of parts uh parts of your body would like kind of shut the hell up to keep you alive uh, because not not all of your bodily functions understand I was about to say English but I guess like language is the is the word we're looking for um, but yeah it's like 
that was what that experience was. It was just like, oh, my, my nose read that note along with the rest of me. It was just like, okay, yeah, sniffing time is over. So anyway, I hope that guy uh, has uh, been permanently damaged by COVID. I can say that because I just had it. Um, but yeah, so this is the point where I find out the hard way that uh, our little uh, plasma friend here uh, cannot 1v1 the pyre. Because as it turns out, the pyre is quite hard to 1v1. And you can't do it with a craft that is, A, not very well designed in a certain important respects, and two, uh, is about half the cost of the pyre. So, yeah, that's uh, not smart. Not smart. It is satisfying to see that you can take down ICBMs um, without needing to use lasers. Uh, that is very nice. So, yeah, I uh, should mention that this video is almost over. Uh, we just get to see the pyre uh, making a mess of this craft. And, by the way, this is why that spaced armor is actually kind of crap. Um, because it's got a an air gap filler already, which means it's already good, decent against heat and hash and that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, like, um, and also just it doesn't have enough block HP to block those freaking Sabo guns, uh, on the pyre. So, that's a bummer. So, yeah, I forgot if I had any thoughts left. I probably should go lie down and sneeze a bit. Probably sneeze first. You don't want to sneeze lying down, it's bad. Anyway. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Let's build. Oh, by the way, uh, names for this thing. Name suggestions would be welcome. Thank you. Farewell.